us were born and raised in the Bay Area of California and we had a home and we basically kind of had a, always had this idea that we wanted to move somewhere and have land and I mean, we both just like being outdoors. When I was done with school, we basically started to look around at places and other states and start to see where we could afford land and find a house that we wanted. And we stumbled upon Oregon. We went and visited and didn't just kind of like up and move. We sold our house and moved all our stuff, sold a lot of stuff and ended up in Oregon. And that was fall of 2014. And when we left California, we both just left with our jobs. We moved to Oregon and found the place we were looking for and we got our land. We got 12 acres on a lake and we found new jobs there. And yeah, we were just working both five days a week and paying our mortgage at that house. So it was in Oregon that we kind of started, I guess, like homesteading is the word for it. Uh, we never really thought we'd do that, but we got really into gardening, hunting, foraging, all that stuff started to really pay attention to the land we were living on and what we could do on it and raising animals. And we actually kind of like started a small farm and we were raising animals for basically customers. Okay, so like Eric said, I mean, we, we were very happy there in Oregon. Um, we, had, we had good jobs and we just felt really comfortable and we're happy with this new direction in our life. But we both really realized and commented on it to each other how quickly time seemed to be going by. I mean, like you'd go to work and then you'd get your things done and then you'd go to sleep and wake up and basically do the same thing. And we had time to do projects and get stuff done, but it just seemed like time was going by super fast at, at like a rate where we just weren't really happy with it going by that fast, I guess. We weren't really okay with it. So at the beginning of this year, or it was around February, we kind of decided to make a change, and I'll let Eric tell you a little bit more about that. Yeah, I guess what we did was, um, Ariel said we had started a small farm, and so, and long story short, I ended up quitting my regular job and doing the farm full time, and then um, when Ariel was off work and on the weekends, she'd help out too. And that was all going good, and then came tax time, again, um, and I think it was kind of like one of the things that really pushed my buttons is, was that at the end of every year that we were living in Oregon, we'd still owe a couple thousand dollars in taxes, and um, yeah, we just didn't enjoy having to work that hard uh, for our money, and then pay all those taxes, and then have to pay taxes again at the end of the year. So, just to touch on that, I think that was for us just a realization point about finances, and we've always been really frugal, and we were very, at a very comfortable point in our lives, but I guess we just, we just realized that the simple concept that when you work, you're trading something for something, so you're giving up a part of your time in order for a monetary, you know, compensation, and we kind of just decided that that wasn't really, that wasn't really what we wanted to do. So it wasn't really worth it to us. So I came up with the brilliant idea that um, we should get ourselves in a situation where we didn't have a mortgage anymore. Bills. And we didn't have any bills at all. Um, you know, when we were living in Oregon, we had a mortgage, we had a tractor payment, a boat payment, a car payment, a, car payment, a truck payment, and we had a bunch of bills. I mean, we could afford them, obviously, but we decided that um, we wanted to do something where we didn't have any bills. So um, we started kind of looking around again where we could find somewhere that was a little more rustic, um, a little more wild with better hunting and fishing than Oregon. And obviously Alaska came to mind. And then we started looking at home prices there and how much we're gonna be able to sell our house for. And yeah, we basically did it all over again. It happened really fast. Um, sold our house in Oregon and made the trip up here. Yeah, we, we did it all, I think we mentioned it before, but we did it all in like a period of two months from quite literally the financial part of it started earlier in the year and then we got really busy with the farm and then in July, Eric 
mentioned this idea of moving to Alaska, and I kid you not, it was less than two months later we were driving through Canada and moving up here. So it's extremely fast. Yeah, and uh, we've kind of learned that too with with doing things. I mean, we've learned that you can sit around and talk about it all you want and let time pass by, or you can just do it right away. And we've we've had pretty good luck doing it right away. Yeah, and we're happy to say now we. We have what? one bill. One bill. We have a cell phone bill. One monthly bill. We do right. have a, our, a our few annually. And yeah, you have um, tags, insurances, things like that. But our only yeah. one bill is our cell phone bill, which happens to also be uh, we have internet too at our house. So that's the only bill we have to deal with right now, and it's pretty nice. And you know, we don't work, so we, you know, we went from Oregon to having all that nice stuff. We don't work in a conventional job. Yeah, we don't work a conventional job. So we get, you know, all this time off. We get to spend time together and we get to do whatever we want, whenever we want to do it. Yeah. Loving it. That And that really just goes back to like this, what we said is that it's a really mindful decision. We really wanted to be aware of like how we're spending our time and each and everything and not fill it up with so much stuff. And we're not blaming our works. I loved our, I mean, I love my job. I think Eric, you know, we both had good jobs. It just was that we had tried to accomplish so much and do so much and fill all our time that you had no time to like stop and breathe and actually enjoy it. One thing I'd like to point out too is that we are very aware of how fortunate we are and never tried to take that for granted. I mean, because we sold that house in Oregon was how we were able to get here and afford the things we can afford. And I mean, and we, we know that's like that's lucky. I mean, it's hard work, but it's lucky too. So one thing that we are kind of interested in doing is we will be getting bees next spring and we're going to start with chickens and we would love to kind of have like a little mini farm and maybe sell some stuff again um maybe have some other side incomes maybe like a rental property or something so we're not completely retired but we just get to spend more of our energy and time doing things that we fully i don't know the, the most important things to us should i say we did it early because I'm 30 and Ariel's 28. Well, he said our ages, so now you know. <laughs> so yeah, I consider us retired. Fast pro shop. So we're getting into Anchorage now, but that was kind of a little backstory. Um, if you ever wonder why we do the things we do, it's just because we're kind of different and non non conventional, non traditional. So we're just trying to decide what's right for us and what we what feels good to us. Um, and we encourage everyone to do the same thing and not just follow a pattern that's, you know, said you have to do this or you have to be this way in life. Because I think we all need to make those choices for ourselves. So with this move to Alaska, we wanted to um, kind of get away from consumerism and having so much stuff. We uh, decided that we bought all this stuff with our hard-earned money and we never used half of it. So um, when we came here, we downsized and it's kind of where we got our simple living Alaska name from just kind of doing things different this time simpler so when I drive in the snow I like to get sideways and it really pisses Ariel off <laughs> now she's only got mad at me like three times this trip for driving like that so if you've ever wondered ever wondered what Anchorage Alaska looks like this is it it's really actually I don't know. I, d I don't think it's that bad. No, it's not. I too... think it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it's not too big of a city, and it's, I mean, you're right on the Cook Inlet, and you're, there's mountains all around you. It's a pretty nice, pretty nice city, and it's not that busy. But we also were born and raised in the Bay Area of California, so it, that's about as busy as it gets. It is busy here, uh, like, a, like a, what is it called? Rush hour. Um, yeah. But I mean, it's, I think the thing that I'd like to take home is that it's beautiful so like even if you live in Anchorage and you just go like 20 30 minutes out you're on top of a mountain practically it's yeah really just a nice state I think beautiful and we're heading to the BMW dealership I'm gonna pick up my anniversary gift for myself a BMW so one thing that I'd like to point out is that as much as we do try to lead a natural lifestyle and 
I do care, I think we both care a lot about the environment and just the changes we're seeing. We do still, we are still guilty of some other pleasures, such as a McDonald's frappe. So, that's a little irony there. Christmas lights. This is Anchorage. Downtown. Downtown during the holidays. Ariel's cold bundled up. This guy's wearing shorts. Go <laughs> 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 